Today is Monday, February 16th, 2016, and the title of this rant will be The Apostasy of Donald Trump. Now, in essence, <laughs> Trump isn't committing any apostasies. Um, in fact, I had to look up the word to make sure, even though I knew it was the right thing to say, if it fit in correctly. And uh, one definition of apostasy is the reunification re re of religion, and the other one is the abandonment of a previous loyalty. Now, Trump doesn't fit either of those ta two categories, but what he said as being a Republican certainly did. Uh, so he was, you know, when I watch these things, it's like I cringe. I remember, you know, you cringe when people say things because you can't believe these things would come out of their mouth. Now, when I was much younger, I really would love to get into that type of stuff because it's that debate aspect. It's, it's getting you riled up. Uh, but so much of that stuff on the Republican debate um, uh, was was just you know the lowest lowest form of communication. Uh, it was a spectacle of the lowest common denominator. That's what I, you know. So uh, Trump has this uncanny ability uh, to bring himself and everyone down in a debate, and of course he did it all over the place on Saturday night. You know, um, by bringing out the, you know, and the thing about it was that this was in South Carolina and he did a couple things that were, which would be the apostasy. Uh, number one, not only did he speak ill will of other Republicans, which was against the 11th commandment of Ronald Reagan. I'd like to know if that was really a true thing that he said. Uh, but the uh, two other things in reference to that is not only did he speak ill well of his other uh, GOP candidates, but he spoke ill will of George Bush, <laughs> who, who, what was he, 2001 to 2009, uh, when he not only criticized the Iraq war, he said that it was a lie to get into it and that there were no weapons of mass destruction. Now, as a liberal uh, and as a progressive, uh, I would wholeheartedly agree with all of that stuff. But if you're going to be running for president as a Republican, that's not something you should be saying at all, especially trashing a previous president, even though he didn't end up with uh, very high approval ratings, even with the Republican Party. Uh, but he, he is still popular in South Carolina. Uh, and by trashing the WMDs and the going into a war that we should have never gone in, that we were lied to, and that George Bush did not protect us from 9-11 because it happened under his watch. And just as another aside, the feeble attempt by uh, uh, Rubio to say that it was really Clinton's fault <laughs> um, fell on deaf ears, made him really look bad too. Uh, but uh, uh, that aspect... Uh, of that George Bush didn't keep us safe, uh, did not play well with what I would call a majority of the Republicans in South Carolina, where again, I say George Bush was still popular now, uh, and that the military is even more popular in South Carolina because number one, they have some bases there, and number two, they have a, re a lot of retired military there. Now, I also like to say that a lot of that retired military is, you know, the officers and on up. Uh, and they don't want to hear that type of stuff, especially in the Republican Party. Now, I, you know, everyone has counted Trump out so many times. I don't think that's going to hurt him at all or shouldn't hurt him at all. But maybe it has. He seemed a little rattled at times. He uh, uh, didn't, you know, when he said some of these things, even though I'd agree with him in reference to the WMD, in reference to being lied to, in reference to me not being kept safe uh, at 9-11 by George Bush, I would agree with all of those things. Uh, but uh, he seemed to be a little bit uh, off his mark at times um, because, like I said, this was a very, very contentious debate. And... To me, I'm just saying me, uh, I would start thinking long and hard about uh, whether or not Donald Trump should be <laughs> the nominee. I'm not sure if all the Republicans think that way. And of course, uh, with there still being four, uh, you know, let's just say four 
other candidates besides Trump that, let's say, still have a chance, none of them rose above all that. None of them rose above the fray, even though I think Kasich tried to move above the fray. Uh, but uh, uh, what Trump was almost doing was actually talking about how he would run uh, his general campaign if he's already the Republican nominee. And of course, if the polling is the way it is and it stays the way it is, he will be the nominee. And it almost bodes well for the powers that be that don't want Trump to come in. Uh, to, it would be to keep uh, putting money into these other four people uh, so that there will be a bartered convention, so that there will have to be something done at the convention because no one will have enough votes and they can get rid of Trump. Uh, because nothing, uh, Trump is like a goose, man. Everything just goes right off his back. Nothing, uh, nothing, nothing affects him at all. And, you know, he can give it out and he can take it. Uh, he's shown that. He's got big kahunas, so to speak. Uh, like I said, it doesn't bode well in the general election. Uh, and uh, the Republicans, uh, and it, I would say that the, the Republican Party's power structure within the party uh, was probably pretty aghast at, at the way everyone conducted themselves in that uh, debate in South Carolina. The election is what, I mean, excuse me, the primary itself is five days away. We'll see if there's any polling ahead of that that may change, that might, may show some type of dynamic change. But like I said, I hadn't heard of Trump before, so, you know, keep doing what keeps working for you. <laughs>